So this lecture is going to go over some properties of solutions. Um, and we talk about solutions, you know, some of the core questions we want to ask is, why do some things dissolve in water, but others do not? Um, and for example, why if we put sugar in water, does that dissolve, whether it's in water or maybe put in coffee or tea, and that dissolves. But if we have something like oil, how come that ends up floating on the surface and not dissolving in water in the same way? And what we're going to see, one of the key points of this is the extent to which different substances dissolve in each other is determined by how well different molecules can interact with each other. So really, we're all coming back to intermolecular forces of attraction. Um, but first, um, some definitions of things. So what is a solution? We can define solution to be a um, homogeneous mixture of solvent and solute. And so a solvent is the component that's present in the largest number of moles, and a solute is any component um, other than the solvent. So in essence, when we mix two things together and they completely mix, whatever's present in the largest quantity is our solvent, and whatever's present and not the largest quantity is the solute. Um, we can show a picture of that. So sugar and water. So all of these are water molecules in here. And we see sugar molecules circled in green dissolves in the water. So the sugar would be the solute, water is the solvent. The solubility then is the maximum quantity of a substance that can dissolve in a given volume of solution. So how much sugar can dissolve in the water. And you also see in chemistry this word miscible. Um, if we mix two liquids, so like water and alcohol, those will mix. Um, and anytime we mix two liquids, we said they, they, can, they are miscible if they can be mutually soluble in any proportion. Right, so oil and water are not miscible. They're immiscible because they won't, um, they're not soluble in each other. So we can look at some examples of some molecules and try and think about their solubility of the following molecules in water. So do we predict these three molecules to be soluble in water? And as we look at this, um, some things we might know. So methanol is an alcohol. Um, hexane, this is essentially a molecule very similar to gasoline. All right, so we know some things about this. And when we look at this, here's their Lewis structures. Here's the Lewis structure of methanol. Here's the Lewis structure of 1-butanol. And finally, the Lewis structure of hexanes. And when we look at it, we can say methanol and water are completely miscible. So you can mix them in any proportion, um, and they'll always be soluble. Hexanes, gasoline is insoluble in water. So if we add hexanes to water, we see the formation of two clear layers, right? Like your salad dressing, all right? So these are insoluble or immiscible in each other. And in between, we have one butanol. And if you look at one butanol, we can see it has a part of the molecule that looks like methanol and a part of the molecule that looks like hexanes. And so when we look at it, it's partially soluble. So it dissolves a little bit. So these things aren't always cut and dry. And why is that? How can we explain what we just saw? And our fundamental driving principle of what is going to dissolve is a three word phrase, like dissolves like. So this very simple phrase is a great predictor of what things will dissolve in other things. And what it means is molecules that have similar properties, really intermolecular forces of attraction, will interact together and dissolve. So water can hydrogen bond, so things that can hydrogen bond will dissolve in water. Right? Hexanes, if we go back to this slide, um, our hexanes molecule only has London dispersion forces, and so it's not going to interact well with water. Right. So that's the type of analysis we're looking at. So here's a picture of what happens when we take water and a nonpolar molecule, a little simulation. So this is water and a nonpolar molecule. Notice the water stays here. The nonpolar molecule stays up top. All right, And so there's very little interaction between the two. However, if we take a sugar molecule, so sugar is a polar molecule. It has some oxygens on it, so it can hydrogen bond with water. When we mix this with water, Let's see if we can't get this to go. 
Oops. There's their first one, and there's a second one. So the, notice the sugar molecule, the water can form strong interactions with our sugar molecule, and so it can take the sugar molecule in because we can form these strong IMF interactions all around it. That can't happen here because the, the nonpolar molecules are better off forming London dispersion forces with each other than trying to interact with the water. And so this is the same picture, same idea shown in a different picture in molecular form. You have a beaker of water. We're showing the hydrogen bonding network between water molecules, a glass of oil, the London dispersion forces between those oil molecules. You mix them together, we get two layers so as not to disturb the hydrogen bonding network and not to disturb the London dispersion forces um, present in those molecules. All right. So this idea, like dissolves like. Now, one of the things that can be really helpful for chemists, um, if you go on in any form of chemistry and look at molecules, is to start to identify what we call functional groups. And functional groups are a way of organizing molecules. So instead of memorizing every molecule on the planet, which is just impossible, um, what we start to do is look for patterns. And one way of looking at patterns is to identify a functional group in a molecule, a part of a molecule that has a certain reactivity. So if you can draw the Lewis structure and start to say, oh, this part of the molecule looks like this, and now I know what the properties are, you can start to understand how it's gonna react and what its properties will be. So for example, one functional group is an alcohol. So an alcohol is a carbon bonded to an OH. So this would be an alcohol, carbon bonded to an OH. And once you start to see this, any alcohol, it doesn't matter what's here, any alcohol, right, can hydrogen bond with water and is polar. So immediately once we see this, regardless of what's here, we know it can form hydrogen bonds and it is polar. So we can start to understand reactivity in this way. Another example is something called a ketone. So a ketone is something that has a C double O bond. And this carbon with the double oxygen bond is bonded to two other carbons. So when we look at this molecule, we see there's a big dipole moment right here. So we're partial negative near the oxygen, positive near the carbon. So this would be a polar molecule. So again, understanding, you don't have to understand what the rest of the molecule is. Once you see this piece, this functional group, you have an idea of reactivity. Once you see this functional group for the alcohol, you have an idea of its properties and reactivity. Okay, so we can look at some tables. So this is taken from a textbook. Um, explain the solubility trend of the following ketones in water. And what we're seeing is a bunch of molecules, two propanone, two butanone, pentanone, hexanone, heptanone. Their structure is shown here, and it's solubility in water. So let's look at what's happening. We're starting off with two propanone. We have a ketone with two carbons. And then we have a ketone with a carbon on one side and then one, two carbons. And then a ketone with one, two, three carbons, four carbons, five carbons. So as we go down, the only thing that's changing is the number of carbons on this chain. As we go down the table, the missive, we start off with something that's miscible in water. We'll mix completely with water to something that's pretty soluble in water, right? We can get 25 grams per 100 milliliters of water, and then not very soluble in water, less soluble in water, and basically not soluble in water. So as we keep adding carbons, the solubility is going down. So what's going on here? Well, what's happening is we're seeing this molecule has a polar piece, right? And that's dominating the intermolecular forces of the molecule. So this will interact very well with water. But as we go down the table, we start making this part of the molecule longer and longer. And this part of the molecule can only do LDFs. So as this portion of the molecule starts to dominate, the molecule starts to be more and more hydrophobic or water fearing. Right? And so this dominant portion of the molecule starts to control the intermolecular forces of attraction. When the molecule is small, the polar portion of the molecule, that ketone, 
dominates, and so it's going to interact well with water. And we can use this to start to understand um, reactivity of molecules. So we can think about things like vitamins. If you've studied nutrition, think about vitamins. So here's some structures of two different vitamins, both in a model form and a Lewis structure form, model form and Lewis structure form. So we have um, this one here is vitamin C. And then over here, we have um, vitamin A. And what we see from these is we often talk about vitamins being either fat soluble or water soluble. And what this is referring to is where does the vitamin go in your body? When you eat the vitamin, where is it stored? All right. And so when you think about that, um, where it's stored has to do with its molecular structure. We can see a fat soluble is hydrophobic. So if you look at this molecule, lots and lots of carbons and hydrogens. This is a very nonpolar molecule that can only do London dispersion forces. It has a tiny polar group here, but majority LDFs only. So this is going to reside in the, our fat of our body, which is all a nonpolar London dispersion force area. Whereas something like vitamin C, right? So vitamin C is a very polar molecule. We have a polar group, but we can start to identify polar, 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 right? Polar, polar, all of these polar bits make it hydrophilic, water loving. And so this is gonna reside in the in water in our body, right? And so this that's the idea of water soluble versus fat soluble. So after this lecture, I encourage you to work through the worksheet that will come next and look at that. Try it first and then watch the video. Thank you.